This is a five minute tutorial on using the Kuhn-Tucker equations for inequality constraints. So I have my objective function f with two inequality constraints, g1 and g2. The first thing I'm going to do is put this into standard form. So standard form is that I have, I minimize uh, an objective function f and then subject to some inequality constraints and I'll just write these as gi uh, x minus b um, that's for 1 to k and then also equality constraints for gi x minus b and that's k plus 1 to m so I have m constraints total and then I have k uh, inequality constraints and then also um, in this I have m minus k equality constraints so the equal sign versus the inequality uh, sign there and now I'm going to take my problem and just transfer it to the standard form uh, first of all. So there's my objective function. It's a uh, quadratic uh, programming problem subject to some linear inequality constraints. Okay, so I have greater than or equal to 3, so I just multiply through by a negative, switch the sign on that, and uh, put it into the standard form. I have g1 and g2. Um, and now what I'm going to do is um, is I'm going to go ahead and assume that both of my constraints are binding. Okay, so that they uh, g1 equals 3 and g2 equals 6. So I'm going to treat them like equality constraints, first of all, and then uh, solve this problem and then look at the Lagrange multiplier afterwards. Okay, so we can, we can see the sign of this Lagrange multiplier after we solve the problem, assuming that they are binding and that they're equality constraints and see if this is a good assumption that uh, g1 should equal 3 and g2 should equal 6. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, write uh, write the second from the second conditions of the Kuhn-Tucker, Kirsch-Kuhn-Tucker conditions. Um, go ahead and write out these equations uh, for each of each of these. So I have my second condition for the KKT. Uh, I have my gradient of my objective minus a summation of my Lagrange multiplier times my gradient of my equations that has equal zero. Okay, so I'm going to write this out element by element now. So I have, in this case, I have uh, the variables um, x1, x2, and then also uh, x3 and then I have my two equations. So I'll have, just have two Lagrange multipliers in this case. Uh, so lambda 1 and lambda 2. And both of those are going to be equal to 0. I'll do my third equation as well. And uh, so this is just with, with respect to x3. Okay, so I differentiate uh, both my objective function and my uh, inequality constraints uh, with respect to x3, um, x2, and x1. And then I assume that g1 and g2 uh, equal um, the right hand side or the B values. Okay, so I'm just going to write out these values for for these equations. I'm I'm just going to take the partial derivatives for uh, of the objective function, also of the equations, and uh, come up with my three equations. So in total, I have five variables: uh, x1, x2, x3, and then lambda one and lambda two. And then I can solve this problem by solving a system of equations. The nice thing about quadratic programming problems with KKT conditions is that it results in a linear programming problem. So I can just do one inversion of that matrix and then come up with my solution. So there's my solution for x1, x2, uh, x3, um, and then I'm going to also have lambda 1 and lambda 2. Okay, so now I have uh, my solution, so I look and see that one of my Lagrange multipliers is negative. So this is the fourth condition, the Kuhn-Tucker condition, uh, that is violated, so this is not an optimal uh, optimal solution. So what do we do uh, with this? Uh, so so the, what you do with uh, the, the negative Lagrange multipliers is you go ahead and fix the Lagrange multiplier at zero, so it's not at the uh, not a binding constraint and then drop that constraint and solve again. So if the optimal solution were here on the contour plot, then uh, both constraints would be active. The blue dot's actually the, the optimal solution. There I have my G1 and G2 constraints, and you can see that G1 is not active at the optimal solution. So what I'm going to do is just set lambda 1 equal to 0 and resolve.